great. I put a chill playlist in Spotify. If you care about that, Kira, um, late to the party, but I'm so glad you're here. Uh, hey, let's get started. <laughs> I just love my outfit so much. Um, all right, we're gonna get started in child's pose. So find your place, uh, knees spread wide, big toes together, butt sinks back, lowering towards your heels, hands reach out overhead. Forehead comes towards the ground. Trying to get comfortable here. And then we'll come back up to tabletop, all fours. Spreading your fingers wide, finding your knees under your hips. We're going to do some cat cows so your tummy can drop down, gazing up at the ceiling. And then reversing that, gazing towards your navel, arching your back. Uh, we can go through these at your own pace, so if you like to kind of wiggle back and forth quickly or slowly, that's fine. <sighs> Moving through our cat cows. Oh, if you wanna go a little side to side here, that works too. Um, and like all of our classes, if my mic ever goes out or you can't tell what I'm saying, please just unmute yourself and say what, cause we're all figuring out how all of this works as we're here. Uh, we're gonna come to a neutral tabletop and our weight will go in our left hand. Our right hand's gonna reach up to the sky and then our right hand's gonna thread the needle, finding the space between your left hand and left knee, squishing all the way through, lowering down onto your right shoulder. Uh, if you are a person who does this pose a lot and knows you like to go in and out a few times, feel free to come out and then back in if you can get a little deeper. Otherwise, we can just hang out here. Uh, if your hips tend to list over to the left side, we can think about shooting our tail straight back. Um, so our our cheeks are over our knees more evenly. And then pressing into our left hand, we'll come back up to all fours. Uh, we're gonna come to puppy dog pose now. So our butt will stay right over our knees. Our hands will walk out in front of us until we can lower our head towards the ground or all the way to the ground for a nice swayed back. From here, we can spin our thumbs up towards the ceiling, pinkies down to the floor. Maybe thumbs go even out a little bit farther than that if that works for our rotation of our upper arms. If your elbows are on the ground, you can bend your elbows and pat yourself on the back here, around the neck or the head, wherever your hands reach. Or if that doesn't work for you, that's fine to keep our arms out in front of us. And if your elbows are bent, we'll open them back up palms out in front of us. We're going to walk hand over hand over to one side of our mat. Doesn't matter which one. We're a little side bend stretch here. And then walk hand over hand to the opposite side of the mat for a little side bend stretch there. And then coming back up to all fours, we'll thread the needle on the other side so your weight will come into your right hand. Your left hand reaches up to the air and then the left arm threads the needle lowering on down. Again, thinking about sending our hips straight back rather than letting the wiggle go all the way down to our low back. More of an upper back twist is what we're going for. Pressing into our right hand, we'll come back up to all fours. From here, we're gonna tuck all 10 toes underneath. 
and then sit back on our heels. Um, sometimes I need to reach back to get my pinky toes to tuck under because they don't want to do it. Um, and we'll hang out here for a little bit. Uh, so if this is too much weight on your feet, because it's pretty awful, um, you can always raise up a little bit so your, your weight isn't pushing into your heels as much. Uh, whatever you want while we're in this pose. Um, but let's do some wrist circles here. So we're thinking about something other than our toe crunches. So toes tucked underneath, weight squashing our toes back, and then just circling our wrist one way and the other. Um, I like to make claws and then circle my hands because sometimes that gets the tendons to crunch around a little bit more um, in a good way. <laughs> all right, we're going to come out of toe crunch for a little bit, but we'll be back soon. So we'll walk forward onto all fours, flip your toes over, uh, and then we're going to do a wrist circle stretch here. So we're going to think about bringing our weight around our wrist. So moving in a circle. Um, if you think about pushing the weight into the top of the palm of your hand and then the base of the palm of your hand or whatever way that makes moving weight around in your wrist, you all look great. That's totally right. Uh, and then if you haven't switched directions, we'll spin around a few times on the other, just working out our wrists in a slightly different way. So good. All right, we'll come to stillness and we're gonna Turn those 10 toes underneath again and sit back into your toe crunch. Again, feel free to get those pinkies in line if they don't wanna go. Uh, let's do shoulder circles this time. So shoulders up, back and down. Nice, great big circles. And then squeezing shoulders together in the front and in the back, front and back like a super cool dance move here we are <sighs> all right we'll come forward onto all fours again uh untuck your toes let them get a little blood flow back in there uh from here we're going to take our hands and spin our fingers out to the sides of our mat and then if that's where you're at, that's fine. Or you can try to spin them all the way back so your fingers are pointing towards your knees. Uh, and then again, we'll rock our weight around in a circle with our wrists just in a slightly different position. Yeah. One direction and then the other. Great. Coming to stillness, we'll walk our fingers back until they're pointing forward. And then for our last toe crunch, we'll tuck our toes under, sit back on our heels, really stretching out those feet. Uh, from here, let's look over one shoulder and then through center over another shoulder. Hopefully you just have two. Back through center over a shoulder through center, over shoulder again. We'll do some neck circles here. Rolling your head around, keeping your jaw nice and relaxed as we roll to the back. So good. All right, we're gonna raise forward until you can untuck your toes, give them a little tap, and then we'll sit back down on our heels for our last wrist stretch. Uh, so this time we're going to come to all fours, but on the top of our hands. Ah, um, so I like to do that by putting my fingernails on the ground, pacing towards my knees, and then slowly rocking weight forward. Um, I end up with about 80% of the weight in my knees so that I'm not putting a lot of pressure. But if you've got real strong backward wrist rotation here, you can certainly rock a lot of weight into your hands. Um, we can try to do little circles here if that's in your wrist today. If not, that's fine. This can be a pretty intense stretch as is. All right, we'll sit back on our heels again. Shake out those wrists. We did a lot of different stuff. Um, we're not in toe crunch. Simon didn't say to tuck your toes under, so feel free to just sit on your heels with your toes uncrunched. Uh, from here, 
we're gonna do a couple face stretches. So let's stretch our face really wide. And then squeeze your face really tight. And then stretch it really wide. And squeeze it really tight. And then we're gonna try to shake our jaw to see if you can make it a little floppy. <laughs> Just a little head shake, cool. Um, and my last stretch I like is to pretend like you're chewing a giant wad of gum. So just like super cartoony, wiggling that jaw around, maybe squeezing up your face. <laughs> so good. All right, we can let our face stretches go. Um, we're gonna come back out onto an all fours tabletop position. And from here, our right leg is gonna shoot out straight behind us. And then it's gonna cross outside our left foot, and we're gonna look over our left shoulder at that. Yes. Funny, funny stretch. So our right side body might feel expansion and our left side body will feel a little scrunched up. Um, I didn't announce this earlier, but I am just doing left and right. So I might not be mirroring you depending on where I'm facing. So don't get confused. Do your best. It's great. All right, we're gonna pick up that right leg and then we're gonna shoot it straight out to the right side of our body. Yes. And then we're gonna walk ourselves up until we're kneeling on our left knee. So you're in like half of a splits. Yeah. Cool. Um, we'll do a little neck stretch here. So our right ear is gonna find our right shoulder. Our right hand can be a little extra weight on top of the head if you wanna hold it over. There we go. I know it's so hard when I don't mirror you, I'm sorry. <laughs> cool, um, our left hand can reach away, maybe like for a suitcase or something. A little nod, yes or no here. It can get a little extra neck goodness in here. Yes, yes, yes. All right, we're gonna bring our head back up to upright and both arms are gonna reach up overhead. And then we're gonna cartwheel over to the side. So our left hand's gonna find the ground. Right hand stretches, great big long overhead from the tip of our right toe to the tip of our right finger. <sighs> and then spinning our torso down, our right hand will find the ground and we'll walk our hands back to a tabletop with the right leg still sticking out all funny. Yes. Uh, from here, we'll thread the needle again so our weight will go in our right hand and our left hand's gonna reach out towards that extended leg. Uh, this is a bit of a pretzel pose. So if you don't like where you landed, feel free to readjust or to just do the regular version of thread the needle like we did earlier. You could just have both knees underneath your hips. But if you like that challenge of the right leg out to the side, you know, do it. Cool. All right, we're gonna push into our right hand, come up to all fours. If your right leg's extended, we'll bring it back in. Uh, from here, we'll do all that stuff on the other side. So our left leg is gonna reach out straight behind us. And then we're gonna cross our left leg outside our right heel, looking over our right shoulder at it. Yes. Nice big long C stretch here. And then we're gonna pick up that left leg and move it 50 degrees, I don't know how far that is, over to straight out to the left side of our body. Yeah. And we'll walk our hands in until we come up to upright. We'll do our little neck stretch on this side. So the left ear finds the left shoulder. The left hand can be a little extra weight if you like that. And the right hand can reach out if that adds anything for your neck. A little nod, yes or no here. And then letting the stretch go, our head will come back up to upright. Both hands are gonna reach up overhead. And we're gonna cartwheel over 
to the right side of our body. Oh, long stretch from the left fingertips to the left toes. And then our left hand's gonna find the ground and we'll walk hand over hand back to the front to our tabletop with a little kickstand. Uh, weight will go in our left hand and the right hand's gonna thread the needle reaching out towards those left toes. Then pressing into our left hand, we'll come back up to all fours, bring our both knees underneath us to meet us, and then we're gonna sit back down in our child's pose. So butt goes towards our heels, forehead goes towards the ground. Couple breaths here, feeling the back of our rib cage expand. We're going to flow through a sleepy time sun salutation. So we're gonna come up to kneeling on our shins and reach both arms up overhead. And then we're gonna bring those hands down to the ground, walk them out to a tabletop position. And then keeping our butt where it is, we'll come to puppy dog. So the hands will walk forward again until our head and chest can lower towards the mat. From here, we're gonna sneak forward until we're laying on our stomach. So rocking your torso all the way to the front of your mat. And then we'll come to Sphinx pose. So our forearms are gonna slide forward until our elbows are stacked underneath our shoulders, just like a Sphinx. So good. And then our face will come back down towards the mat. Our hands are gonna slide back until we can push up to a tabletop. And then we'll walk our hands and butt all the way back to that child's pose with our hips down by our heels and our forehead towards the ground. All right, we're gonna go through that two more times. So from here, we rise to standing on our shins, kneeling on our shins, reaching up overhead. And then our hands come back down to the ground, walking forward to a tabletop position. And then the hands keep going, the hips stay where they are, lowering down into a puppy dog position. From here, we come all the way onto our stomach at the front of the mat, chest moves forward. And then our forearms slide, coming into a sphinx, looking up out in front of us, finding space in our neck. Then our chest comes back down to the ground, our hands slide back, pushing up into all fours, and then walking our hands and hips all the way back to child's pose.
Hey, Amelia, you are muted. Something weird happened with the hosting situation. So. That was a really amazing child's pose, though. I was sounding for like two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that's so weird um i have like a pants I don't know. okay i don't know yeah that's i don't know but we're good now thank you for letting me know i'm glad that we just had there a super long child's pose <laughs> <It's not still. laughs> it was right. super long um, so hey let's do a pec stretch um we're gonna come onto our tummy and we're gonna stick our right arm straight out to the side and then we're gonna roll over onto our side. Uh, so I like to push into my left hand to push myself over. Um, I let my top leg kind of fall behind me, but you could certainly keep them stacked. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to see you all cause you're laying, but we're, we're squeezing this right arm behind us. You look lovely. We're gonna hang out here for a while. I'm gonna make sure my timer's going so I know how long we're here, but this is a good for us stretch. Oh. While we're here, uh, our left hand could push into the ground to bring our torso a little bit more perpendicular, um, or the left hand can just be a little bit more relaxed or it could reach up behind you if that's like a thing you're excited about. Those are all options. Okay, we're going to roll to our tummies um, and then that sphinx pose you maybe did earlier or maybe you were in child's pose, um, but we're going to come to that. So finding our forearms on the ground, myself in the screen, um, elbows under our shoulders, uh, and then really actively pushing into your elbows, trying to find a long neck and some space between your ears and your shoulders. Uh, if you get any lower back pain here, a little squeeze in the glutes can make it feel a little bit better. And then we're just going to head on over to the other side of that shoulder opener. So we'll lower down to our tummies and our left side's left arm's going to shoot out to the side. Your right hand can temp up and we can roll on over opening up our left shoulder. Again, lots of options here. Your top leg could flip over or not. Your top arm can dance over or press into the ground. Um, if you find that you're clenching your head off the ground, if you can release it to your ear and top of your head is touching the ground or put a pillow underneath it, that makes it a little bit more comfortable. Okay, rolling back to our tummies. We're gonna come to Sphinx again as our midpoint pose. So pulling your forearms to the ground underneath you, finding that space between your ears and shoulders. All right, we are going to do that progression again, but a little bit different. So this time when we come down to our stomach and our right arm goes out to the side, rather than shooting straight out like a T, uh, we're gonna go for more of a Y position. So you might find like a 45 degree angle with your hand. 
um, and then roll over onto that. Uh, so you might find that you don't go as far, or maybe you go farther. It might just be like a different, different part of your shoulder is getting that little push there. All right, we'll roll back onto our stomachs. Um, this time you can do Sphinx again, if that is a pose that you liked in between, um, or we can come to a seal um, or a cobra or some other variation. Um, that just means pushing a little bit more into your hands and your elbows can come off the ground a little bit. Uh, we haven't done a whole lot of deep back bends, so probably not straight arms unless that's really great in your body, um, but just a little bit more of a back bend, maybe looking up at the ceiling here. And we'll come back down to our stomachs and then do that on the left side. So the left arm will go out uh, and then bringing it up to, I don't know what that is, 10, 11 o'clock, trying a 45 degree angle on the side. Um, you can tend to up your right hands and roll, roll over onto our left side body with that upper shoulder stretch. Okay, rolling back to our stomachs again for a little back bend of your choosing. Feel free to choose the sphinx or the elbows off the ground, some sort of back bend. You could try walking your palms a little closer if that feels like a good challenge for today um, or having them out. Guest appearance by my dog. There he goes. Goodbye. <sighs> Okay, we'll lower down to our tummies and we're gonna do one last version of that stretch. This time, instead of our right arm going straight out, uh, we're gonna have it go out like a goal post. Um, so we'll have a 90 degree bend in our elbow. Um, so shoot the right arm out to the side. Let me get on screen um, with a bent elbow and then rolling over there. Um, again, this will change how the stretch feels. You might not go as far over.
Okay, we're gonna roll back to our tummies again. This time, we're gonna add a little quad stretch to our sphinx. So finding ourselves in our sphinx position, um, I'm going to bring my left forearm to be parallel with my torso. So I'm just sort of windshield wipering my left fingers to, so they're towards my right elbow. So much talking. Um, my right arm, my right knee's gonna bend and my right arm's gonna reach back for that foot. Uh, if it's not there, that's fine. Um, if you can grab it, you can certainly try to push it towards your butt for a little quad stretch here. Yeah. Nice. Okay, we'll let that quad stretch go. Bring our hands back out and then lowering down to our tummy. One last pec stretch on the left side. Go post your left arm and then we'll roll over our left side body or a final shoulder opener. And rolling back to our stomach, we'll find our sphinx position one last time. This time our right hand's gonna come over to tickle our left elbow. And then our left leg's gonna bend, our left hand's gonna reach back to grab it. Push your heel towards your glutes or think about grabbing that foot if it's not quite within reach today. And releasing our left foot, we'll bring our hands back to the regular sphinx, lower down to our tummy, and then push yourselves up through tabletop, finding child's pose. can raise back up to all fours and our next stop is going to be pigeon on the right side. Um, so I like to get into a pigeon from downward dog. If that's how you like to do it, that's great. Um, you can follow along if you know something else you like about pigeon. We could do that too. Um, but curling my toes under, hips up high, doing that upside down V. Then I'm going to take my right leg and scoot it all the way forward till my right knee finds the ground by my right wrist. Then my left knee will find the ground, left toes unhook, and I like to just kind of inch my left leg back a little bit uh, and then walk myself forward over this front right shin. Uh, if you want to stack a pillow or a blanket or your fists to rest your hands on, head on, or if your head comes to the ground, that's fine. To keep your right knee safe, a little bend in the right ankle can help if you're feeling any tweaks there. Um, if this doesn't work for your body at all, a nice variation would be to just flip this upside down so we can do this laying on our back, just holding our right shin. Um, or if you want a figure four on the back, if that's a thing you know works better in your body, that's fine too. Otherwise, we'll hang out here.
If you find that after being here for a bit, you may be getting pins and needles in your feet, that's okay. Uh, but if it's too much for you, you're welcome to always come out of this position. But maybe after a little bit longer here, you can fold yourself a little bit farther forward, reaching your head a little bit farther away. All right, we are gonna push ourselves up to upright. You can roll onto your right butt cheek and then just swing your left leg around or however you wanna get into this position with the left leg shooting out in front of us and the right sole of the foot on the left thigh. Gotta get my mic pack out of the way. There's not places to wear a mic pack in a onesie. Uh, from here, we're gonna forward fold over our extended left leg. Yeah, nice, nice. All right, we're gonna bring ourselves back up to upright and we'll move to the other side. So we're gonna go to our pigeon on the other side to begin with. If you wanna just find your way into downward dog. This time, oof, once you're there, the left leg is gonna get picked up and bring forward to the left knees by the left wrist. Untuck your back toes, maybe slide that leg back a little bit. Um, a nice bend flexion in your left ankle can keep your left knee safe if it feels like it's getting kind of crunched up. Then you can walk your hands forward. Again, feel free to grab a pillow or something to put your head on uh, or rest it on the floor or stacked forearms. And different sides can feel very different. So again, if this isn't working for you with a tummy down, you can always flip over laying on your back and do a variation of holding your shin towards your torso or a figure four, which can get, still get the same stretch in your hips just without gravity being as intense. We'll use our arms to push ourselves up to upright. This time you can fall on your left butt cheek and spin your right leg around 
or however you want to get to upright with your right leg extended left sole the foot into the leg we'll forward fold here Hmm. Bringing ourselves up to upright. We're gonna roll back into a little cannonball on our mat. So holding your shins in towards your chest. We'll rock ourselves side to side. My floor is very squeaky. Hopefully that's not getting picked up. Uh, and then we'll come to happy baby. So our soles of the feet are gonna come up towards the sky. Uh, you can grab your shins or the inside or outside of your feet. And then we'll rock side to side here. <sighs> <laughs> and then finding stillness, we'll hug our knees together again. Our knees are going to fall over to the left side of our body, maybe all the way, maybe just part way. Um, and then our right arm will reach out away from us. We'll look over our right shoulder for a supine twist. And then bringing gaze back up overhead. We'll bring our knees through center to the opposite side. Left arm reaches out, gazing over our left shoulder for a little twist here. And then bringing our left arm up and over so we're in a fetal position on the right side. We can push ourselves up to upright. I would love us to find some sort of legs up the wall. Now you might not have a wall by you. Um, if you have a door you can use, that's fine. If you have a chair you can use. Um, I've got a sofa over here, so it's actually fine to just have your heels on a sofa. Um, but legs up the wall is some variation of having your legs supported higher than your body. So if you're against a wall, you could have your legs straight along the wall. Um, but they can just be supported on anything that's a little bit high. So yeah, if you've got a kitchen cabinet or a door frame or a, yeah. <laughs> I can't tell where most of you are, but you look, you look right. So this is a little baby inversion for the day, just to let the blood flow out of her legs a little bit, having them held up. Um, so if you feel like you're having to contract to hold your legs in whatever you're balanced on, um, we can just come out and do like a butterfly on the ground. Um, but it's kind of nice to have your legs up over, over your heart for a little bit in a gentle inversion. So we'll stay here for a minute or two. My dog just joined me. <laughs> if your legs are on an item that you could possibly do straddle legs up the wall, like bringing your legs a little bit wider apart, you could certainly try that. Um, it kind of depends. That's definitely easiest if you have a big wide open wall in your house, which I don't. Um, but if that's where you're at, you could try that. Otherwise, staying where we are with our feet on our wall. 
Wherever we are, we can bring our knees into a chest for a little hug or let them slide down the wall. <sighs> Roll over to one side or the other and push yourself up to upright. <sighs> and that's all my programming for today. Uh, so thank you for following along. Sorry, my mic went out in the middle. Um, let me know if you have any questions or thoughts. Uh, and have a good night.